Welcome back to Pocus Geek. My name is Jared Marks and in this series of lectures we've been talking about obtaining vascular access. Now these same sequences can be used for arteria but we're mostly focusing, on, focusing right now on uh, venous access and that's what we'll continue to do here. Now um, like I said this is part two. The first part was identifying the correct vessel and focusing mostly on identifying the correct vein. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to continue along our objectives and we're going to start looking at the technique used to place a vascular catheter and how to verify that in the vein. In the first lecture, if you haven't had a chance to watch that, I'd recommend going back and doing that. That We discuss uh, objectives one through three. Now, when we talk about performing any procedure, you should set the room up and set the patient up in correct positioning so that you have the most success. And when we go to do vascular access, this is particularly important. And the first thing we want to discuss is that when you're going to do vascular access, we want to uh, forget about this notion of where does the probe marker have to be in correlation to the patient, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in correlation to the patient, but it does matter where it's directed in correlation to your image. So ignore the probe marker has to be to the right or to the left or whatever convention you're used to scanning or the head you need to focus on where is the probe marker in correlation to the marker on the screen so here we can see the probe marker here and we see the probe indicator here so this to correlate so the key is that if you come in and you see your needle tip right here and you know that you need to redirect this way in order to get access that you it correlates with what's on your image with the movements that you're doing externally on the patient. In this particular video we're looking at an IJ and the carotid here. Now let's look at this. So if we set up the room, this is looking at the median cubital vein which we saw earlier and is right here. And then we have an artery down over here. And if we set up the room, you notice that the, the machine is over here across from the patient but it's in line of sight or direct line of sight with the vessel that I'm going for. Now you may have gone in and I usually uh, um, assess which vein I'm going to go for first, get all my machine settings correctly, the depth and everything, and save my pre-attempt um, images or videos, whatever you do at your institution. I save those and then I set up the machine across from the patient so it's in direct line of sight so that I have the best success at doing this. So you can see those veins there. Now, say we're going to be doing a uh, IJ and we're looking at this patient's right uh, IJ. Well, if you notice here that the probe marker, it's hard to see here, but the probe marker is actually this way because my indicator is over towards the patient's left. And that's important so that when I look at this right IJ, here is the vein or here's the artery and here's the vein and that's going to be particularly important that I know which way to move my needle when I see it sonographically so that I'm not you know accidentally redirecting and hitting the carotid and think I hit the the IJ or I'm you know injuring another vessel or even going towards um, the esophagus or the trachea anything else so what we have to keep in mind as we do this evaluation is that our screen is like this and the probe marker once again it correlates with the uh, probe indicator here and they both match. So this would be, you know, on that case when we're looking at the right IJ, this would be the patient's left over here and this side would be the patient's right. So if we go back to that, we can see probe markers this way. So when we look at it, his trachea on this image is here, there's his carotid and then there's the IJ and that would be the same correlation that we see here. So carotid or sorry, trachea, carotid, IJ, and that will correlate with what we're seeing here on the patient. Once again, we're going to make sure it's a compressible vessel before we ever attempt at it. Now, there's two axes that you may hear of about attempting approaches to this, and there's the short and the long axis. Um, the short is good for anybody to use. The long uh, is beautiful because you can see the needle the whole way. It's easy if you can do it, but it requires a super cooperative patient. It requires very good uh, probe placement and can be a little more difficult. So majority of people 
uh, often just do the short access. And the short access is great. I love using the short access. It's what I teach my learners to do because you get to see the other structures. So just like this, I can see right now the vein and the artery and they're sitting right next to each other and I know that my needle's close to the vein. Now, the only problem with the short axis is if you've got to pay attention to where your needle tip is. And so just because you see the, uh, the needle does not mean that you know where the tip is. So say, for example, we see this the needle here, but what if our tip or what if our probe is only placed that we see it sitting above the vein, but we've actually gone through the vein through and through and our needle tips way down here. So the key is that you have to pay attention to where your needle tip is. And that's um, what we're going to discuss here of how you do that. So we're going to imagine that this right here is our vein we're going to go for. We're going to have our skin layer here and we're going to think of our Pythagorean theorem and that's going to give us an estimation of how much catheter we should use. Now we don't have markings on the vein on the cat on the needle but it allows us to have an idea of how deep we're going to travel before we hit that especially if we start at that 45 degrees and we're going to use what's called a stepwise approach to um, put this into the vein. So what I like to do is first um, I identify the vessel where I want to hit it approximately and then I'm going to come back from that and I'm going to um, put my probe there, make sure I've got nice clear structures underneath it. And then I'm going to move my probe away from that spot just a little bit and insert the needle. I like to go needle or bevel up. Some people like it bevel down, um, but I like bevel up because it cuts into the vein better instead of filling that pop. Um, and I'm visualizing the needle tip so I like to be accurate so I'm not popping through and compressing the posterior wall. So what we're going to see here is we put the needle under. Then we're going to take our probe and we're going to come back and we're going to find that needle tip. And then we're going to advance our probe first. And then after we advance the probe, we're going to advance the needle until we see it come into view. Once you see the needle tip come into view, you need to stop. Stop moving the needle and then move forward with the probe. And you're going to do this. And I do this typically every you know two to three millimeters or it depends on how far in depth I'm going to go, how far I have to make it. And then once we get to right where we're sitting on top of the vessel, and we'll see it's called tenting, then I'm going to drop the plane of that probe just a little bit, or I mean of the needle, just a little bit, maybe to 20 to 30 to 20 to 30 degrees, and then I'm going to enter the vessels. And that way I can um, try not to go through the posterior wall as much. Now we're going to see this on a blue phantom here, and what you'll notice is I first put the needle under here, and then I bring the probe back to find the the uh, needle tip and it will show up as a hyperechoic lesion here and then as we advance then you'll see the probe advance and then the needle will come into view as, I, as the needle tip is moved so let's go ahead and watch that so needles under we're going to come back and we're going to find the vessel or the needle which we see here now we're going to move forward our hand and then our needle comes after shortly after we move our probe just a little bit then we're going to get right on top of this vessel here and we're going to tent it and then we advance the probe a little bit and we can see our needle tip right in it. That way we've never lost visualization of the needle tip and we know that we're right into the vessel and we haven't gone past it like we saw in the other example. So let's take this example. So right now this is where we want to be really accurate at what we're doing. So what we see is we're going for a deep brachial and the deep brachial arteries right here and the deep brachial veins right here. And we've put a tourniquet on so it's nice and plump. But what we also see is that there is a nerve right here. And there is another small vessel right here. But we have our um, approach. And back in here, down in this hyperechoic area, we likely have other nerves. And so as we look at this, we have to be super accurate. And we don't have a lot of distance because if we look over here, we're at a half a centimeter deep. So put the probe in the middle. This one's a little off to the side. Use that marker on your probe and insert the needle, but then you can redirect. And we'll see that here that um, we're coming in and the needle actually comes in about right here and then we're able to redirect back towards the uh, vessel correctly. So let's see here. See the needle tip come in and it's a little hyperechoic lesion right there. And then we come back and we'll actually see our needle tip come in over here. You see it came through and we didn't puncture. We did hit the back wall, but we never punctured through that back wall because we watched for that needle tip to come through. 
Here's another example of we're tenting the vessel wall. And you can see how collapsible that vessel is, so it's important that you, are, you know what structures are underneath it and where your needle tip is, because we're tenting this vessel wall before we enter it. So the short axis is really great, uh, especially when there's other structures around it, as long as you keep track of that needle tip, and I really like it. Now sometimes, and I think it looks better image-wise to be able to get the long axis, but it's not always as easy. It requires a really straight vessel. It requires um, a good uh, echographic or echolucent um, uh, needle and um, an cooperative patient in order to get this. And I've seen people unfortunately make mistakes, especially when you have an artery and a vein right next to each other. They try to rotate out the probe. And as they do that, they actually rotate and slip over the artery when they're trying to access a vein. And that can be problematic in obtaining access. So just keep in mind that a long access is nice because you see the needle, but you may not always see all the other surrounding structures. And so what we have to do is we want to first find the vein in a short access or the vessel, even if you're doing arterial, and we're going to rotate our probe slowly, keeping it in view in the middle of your screen. You want it right down the middle like this so that you can stay on that and as you rotate it will stay in view and we're going to just keep rotating until we lengthen out the vessel and then once we lengthen out that vessel then we're going to introduce the needle um, on either end whether it be your probe marker end or the opposite end and you're going to watch that needle go in now the key is is when you do this you have to be very skilled at keeping this straight it has to be exactly in plane with the probe because if you're not then you'll only see a portion of the needle and you won't know where your needle tip is same thing we had with when we did our short axis so these two over here are actually bad technique and we don't want to do that we have to keep it right in plane so you got to keep not only your probe hand still but then you have to accurately place the needle right on in plane with it but the beauty about it is is then once we do it we can see this needle tip the whole way in into the vein and we get a pretty picture just like this and we can watch even you know if we have an assistant we can have them show the catheter going in or those different things and it's beautiful to see it this way but it's not always um, feasible with the patients that we have especially in the emergency department that may be uh, distressed so we can see clearly that this catheter is getting advanced so how else can we verify that we're in the correct vessel? Well, we can do a couple simple things. So a, you, once you get in the vessel, you can have the nurse, you can move the probe proximal on the patient, and you can watch and see if there is um, the flush coming through. And you'll see a little bit of hyperechoic bubbles within it. So what I want you to pay attention to is we can actually see our catheter uh, right here. I'll show you right there. It's a little bit difficult to draw since it's so small, but here's our vein. The catheter's right within it, but what we can do is we can also do a flush of that, and we can see here that they're, um, the, well, we're watching the catheter in this portion, and then here in this next one, we're going to see a flush, and we can see that nice little flush fill that vein up with fluid. Now, this patient was a severely volume-depleted DKA patient, and so you can even see some respiratory variation when he breathes in. But you can see that veins collapse or filling with hyperechoic uh, bubbles uh, from just general saline. Uh, this is a long axis of the same thing. And so we can just see right here at the very tip of it, just those little bubbles that come in. And we can verify we're in the vessel. Now, if you remember back, when we saw the subclavian, that was a proximal vessel in this same patient and we were able to see the bubbles even clear up at the subclavian vein so you don't have to be right at the tip of your catheter like I'm showing here um, but you can be there or you can just be more proximal on that same vein okay so if we if we get a central line then we can also verify this by doing either a sub xiphoid or a peristernal long axis of the heart and we can see bubbles actually entering the heart um, in this particular case, it's a little dark because uh, we didn't overgain the image, which you could superficially, but you can look right here at the right ventricular outflow track, and we'll see some bubbles come in here um, that show 
that we are ha that we have correct access here. So let's go ahead and watch this. You see them just there briefly, and then they're going to go away. And this is going to loop, and you'll see them again. But those bubbles up there, those little hyperechoic structures circulating in your right ventricular outflow tract, are evidence that you hit the right vessel. Here's another evidence of this. This one's a little overgained, so you're going to be able to appreciate it a little more. You can see right up here, this right ventricular outflow tract fills with those hyperechoic um, that those hyperechoic things from the normal saline is all you need to use. So I hope that you found this helpful in uh, obtaining access in your patients. This is a, a skill that we all need to have in emergency medicine and a lot of other specialties are also gaining access, uh, whether it be peripheral or central. Just remember, you don't always have to obtain uh, central access. It can also be peripheral access. It does take more skill, I think, for a peripheral access because they're smaller vessels. But if, I think if you're using the correct technique, you'll easily be able to um, place a catheter in these. Now, I mostly focused on veins here. The same techniques of long and short access can be used to identify um, your artery and place a, a catheter within them. Um, but currently in this one, we're just talking about veins. I hope that you found that topic useful. If you have questions about it or other related point of care ultrasound questions, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or comment below. Also subscribe to this channel to get updates on this topic or other point of care ultrasound related subjects.